Big news. Big news. Let's tell them. Right now? Yeah, right now. Juicers? Your boys have their first sponsor? Check this out. It's actually really cool because we use it too. So it's like an amazing software. We are very proud to announce that we have partnered with Rent Ready as our first official sponsor slash partner for the Weekly Juice Podcast. Are you new to investing? Wondering whether or not you can self-manage your properties? Let us tell you about Rent Ready. Rent Ready is a really awesome property management software that can help you grow and handle every aspect of your real estate business. Rent collection, tenant screening, maintenance, lease signing, listing. Honestly, it has everything. Yeah, how long do you think we've been using Rent Ready for ourselves? About five months. Yeah, about five months. It's been awesome. We do use their push notification system to send notifications to tenants. We collect rent from our tenants right through the app. And we're actually about to use their new feature, their 24-7 maintenance software called Latchel. And a Latchel will allow you to remove yourself as the landlord, as the middleman between your tenants and maintenance calls. So the tenants can directly call a maintenance line and they will dispatch contractors right to the property. We should also mention that Rent Ready is unlimited. All their plans are flat price. This essentially means you can keep adding properties to your portfolio without having to pay more. You can close on all the properties you want and Rent Ready's price stays the same. The best part is Rent Ready's given us an amazing deal to pass on to our weekly juice listeners. You guys, everyone listening, can get 50% off a Rent Ready plan at rentready.com when you use our code JUICEPOD. That's R-E-N-T-R-E-D-I.com with code JUICEPOD. J-U-I-C-E-P-O-D at rentready.com and you can get 50% off any plan. If this is your first time here, welcome. During our shows, we interview successful entrepreneurs and investors to spread knowledge, advice, and actionable tactics to help others in the pursuit of financial freedom. We discuss successes, failures, systems, motivations, experiences, and key lessons learned along the way in the hopes that these stories help you along your journey. Tune in every Wednesday to get your weekly juice. If you've been here before and like what you've been hearing, please subscribe, share with friends, rate and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That goes an extremely long way for us. It's simple. Just click on your podcast app, type in our podcast name, The Weekly Juice, click on the reviews and let us know what you think. The more ratings we get, the more eyes we'll get in our show and in turn, we'll be able to provide you all with high quality guests. You can also find us on Instagram at Weekly Juice Pod for daily content and personal finance tips to assist in your journey towards financial freedom. Welcome back to the Weekly Juice. As always, Ryan and Corey here with another episode for you. We brought back some heavy hitters today for this episode. It's going to be a very special one. We have Felipe Mejia. You may know him as the former Bigger Pockets rookie host. We have Diego Corzo, who is a, let's just call it. Rockstar agent. Rock. I mean, he does it all. Yeah. He's, he's an agent, investor, speaker, coach, TEDx talker. He speaker. was on episode 40. Episode 40. Felipe was previous episode 26. But they formed a partnership and have been thriving ever since. They do e-commerce, real estate, credit repair, and they also have a mastermind group. We dove into a lot of different facets in this episode. It was, it was more free-flowing. I will say, just as a, a precursor here, our audio for the maybe first half of the episode isn't yeah. great on our end. Theirs is fine. We're working with some new technology, but it gets better. So hang in there with us. The content's great. Just bear with us with the sound. Yeah. These guys, we figured this is the first time we've had repeat guests and we wanted to do it kind of like a dive in on their partnership and how their partnership was formed and how their partnership started in real estate and then went to these other businesses and the alignment that they have as partners and how that carries them into the other businesses and that makes them successful. So we figured we'd have like a little partnership episode, catch up with these guys and then provide you with some really good content on, on how to form a partnership of your own. So Let's bring back the boys. Let's do it. Felipe and Diego, welcome back to the Weekly Juice. We are juiced to have you back here. You both have had individual shows on our podcast before, but we decided to bring you back for a tag team episode, partnerships, and just talking about life, investing, the pursuit of happiness. Welcome back. Awesome. Man, thank you so much for having us. Super okay. excited. Very happy to be here. Absolutely. So I guess we should probably, let's talk first off about just the situation in the world. Like, Hold on real quick. You, let's have them introduce themselves for people that maybe haven't heard them on our show before. Just briefly, like 30 seconds each, just to go through and just uh, give us a little where you live and a and, uh, little background. 
Yeah, for sure. I can go first, Philippe, if that's okay. Cool. So I am an agent. I am a realtor in Austin, Texas. I've been doing that for the last six years. I used to be a software developer um, and I left that when I was 25. I'm 30 years old now and bought my first property when I was 23 and now have a portfolio of around 20 plus doors all over the United States with various um, different ideas, different uh, like Air, Airbnb, house hacking, long-term, short-term rental, stuff like that. Uh, and then I have a mastermind group with Felipe and a few other businesses too, with other with with other people as well. So all about the partnerships. I didn't know yeah, you're absolutely. all in the States for the rental, so that's awesome. Go ahead, Felipe. Guys, Diego's undercover, y'all. He should be like the ninja <laughs> investor. He's got stuff everywhere. Y'all, he's got like Airbnbs in the mountains. He's got like property and tenant. I guess just ridiculous. He's he's not even get into him. <laughs> oh man. He Airbnbs Atlantis. What? <laughs> First? Never know. All right, so my name is Felipe Mejia. For those who don't know me, I'm on Instagram at Felipe Mejia, R-E-I. I'm sure to be in you guys' show notes. Um, but basically, I have a portfolio of about 18 doors. Um, 90% of those are in Tennessee. I have two doors in uh, Georgia. Um, and I've <clears throat> been partnering with Diego on a quite, uh, some business ventures, uh, more known for our rat race to five mastermind. And then we have... A couple other aspects of that that we do together. I've uh, been investing for about four years now. Or no, sorry, this will be my fifth year. I uh, reached financial independence two years ago. Or uh, See, look, I'm a year behind. Three years ago now, when my son was born, I kind of rushed rushed into it and kind of put like, I was like all into uh, real estate. And I was like, I have to be, I'm either going to be rich or I'm not going to be a good dad. Like, it's going to be hard for me. So I was like, I got to do this quick. So I dumped all my money into real estate as fast as possible, retired myself. And that's given me the freedom to really explore other avenues that have made me way more money than I ever thought. Uh, and then uh, partnerships has really double, tripled my portfolio because of that. So all in for the partnerships. Love it. Excellent. So now that we're on the topic of partnerships, how did you guys meet? And then how did the partnership form as in like, all right, Felipe, Diego, like we realized it clicked at one point, like this guy's got to be my partner. We can take it to the moon. Yeah. Yeah. I, Felipe, I can, you can take, go. I, yeah. I can tell the story. Um, you know, it's interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to start with a 30,000 foot view. So overall, Diego and I really, um, are keen on this. If you want to have a great partnership, there's got to be a visionary and an innovator. And we're just reminded to dig into that. But the way Diego and I met was at a bigger pockets conference, the one that came to Nashville. And that's the first place we actually met. Now we had talked prior to that, but that's where we had met and kind of like started creating the vision of some of the things that we saw in common. So I had been on the bigger pockets episode and then Diego was after me. I just want to make sure everyone knows that I was first. That's he important. Was first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. As long as no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Everyone, <laughs> everyone knows that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love Diego. So, but actually I had heard that Diego was going to be, that his episode was coming out soon. And I reached out to him and I was like, hey, Diego, look, I was on the podcast and I wasn't ready for the questions that I was going to get. And I wasn't I wasn't I didn't prepare myself to help those that were asking those questions. Um, And I reached out to Diego and said, I said, look, dude, your podcast is coming out, man. Like, I love that you're Latino. I love that you're freaking crushing it like you're an awesome dude. Um, Please prepare yourself because I was able to help maybe 20 percent of the people that reached out to me because I just wasn't ready for the volume. Um. So Diego was like, yeah, okay, perfect. Thank you. And and I think he did take action on that. Um, and then I like that right there was like the first example of visionary and implementer. Like I envisioned and he implemented and it worked out in his favor. And then we started doing lives together where we were helping people out. Cause he told me, he's like, okay, I can't help everyone out. But what if we did lives together where we helped all those people at one time? And I was like, oh my gosh, that makes perfect sense. So Diego had this great idea for us to go live for free on Instagram and just answer people's questions for hours on end. Like we saw questions and we just answered them because we couldn't do it one on one like I was trying. Like I was sitting there like texting people back answers to crap. And I was like, dude, I can't do this all day. And Diego was like, no, dude, let's just go live. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you're so smart. That makes a lot of sense. Like (laughs) I just wouldn't have thought of that. Um, So that's kind of like how we met, started forming a friendship. And then we connected at the Bigger Pockets conference and was like, yo, like there's a lot of investors here that look like us that aren't represented on podcasts on like 
80 percent of the uh, of the people that had been recorded on bigger pockets at the time were like white like i was like they just were not being represented well i was like can we do something about that and then rat race defy was formed businesses that we've decided to do have been formed and um and, and that's kind of like a thirty thousand foot view of how we've met mm-hmm. yeah the interesting part here though too is that um What's really what I really like about this story is that we met through like we connected through through Instagram. And that's really cool because a lot of people think that you might need to meet your partner uh, like in your local area. But you can create a business with people, invest with people. They don't have to be just in your city. We met through Instagram by sending a DM. Right. So that's very important. and Cool. We've had we've had about, I would say, three to four other investors say the same thing and that we were so curious that we you know the question we posed to them was like hey how did you start investing out of state and like how did you build your network and, and she said specifically i'm thinking of one person solely she was awesome and she said all the instagram and everything she's like there's a you'd be surprised what you can get from a dm and you can do i guess you can do call and lives and all that stuff from from instagram but it's just interesting that everything has gone digital and you don't need to be in the same place i mean look we're all in three different places so we're in philly one you're in florida and i believe you're in Nashville. Um, uh, Felipe. But to that point, you know, when you search for a partner, what do you guys feel is like, how do you not, how do you know when you found a good partner, but like what characteristics do you look for and how do they, how do you balance each other out? Yeah. So what's really important is that you need to know that you complement each other. For example, if you have somebody who's a software developer who just writes code and you talk to somebody else and be like, Hey, let's, let's write code together and become a partnership you're just you're gonna need to hire out the management the visionary something right so it's really important to partner with somebody that complements you have the visionary and the integrator just like felipe was saying what and with that comes more a little bit of the like if you begin to look at the disc profile right felipe i bet you i like i haven't seen him but i bet you that it is he's a high d I am more like an IS or SI, which means like I can implement some stuff. I like some form of stability, some kind of things. Felipe takes the role of he just texts me ideas all day or he sends me a, hey, we should do this, we should do this, we should do that. And I take the role of the implementer. So it's really important to make sure that you complement each other because if not, you're going to need to either hire out or you're not going to be able to grow something the like you're not going to be able to take the potential as much as possible if you partner up with the same person. So Diego's Diego's being really nice because he's <laughs> That's funny. Guys, sorry, I'm super laid back on podcast cuz I love authenticity, but Diego's being really nice because he's like Oh, Felipe texts me a couple times a day and says, you know, things and then I implement. That's not how it goes at all. I text Diego all day and Diego tells me I'm crazy 90% of the time yeah. and he'll run with 10% of my my ideas and then we do really well. But that's that's the importance of a solid partnership because let's say that I had a partner same as I where we had crazy stories or crazy ideas all day long none of it would actually come to life. Like you, I, we wouldn't be able to implement, we would sit there and look at each other at a coffee shop and be like, okay, great. That's an awesome idea. Dude, that works so perfect. But we would have no idea how to like move forward with those ideas. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, for example, with Diego, you know, I could, I pitch an idea to him, like we did rat race and he was like, okay, this is how we're going to do it. He's like, we're going to go live. We're going to see if there's a market for this. And then after we had like 70 to hundred people, like consistently on the live, we're like, okay, now let's move it to a more secure platform, like like a, a, a mastermind style thing where we can actually have conversations with people back and forth. And then from there, and then it just kind of organically grew from there, right? But I wouldn't even, even envision to go live with people. I was just like, dude, we got to find a way to text people back. I don't know, right? So I have vision and Diego has more of that implementation. Stream and awesome. Yeah. Exactly. And what Diego calls it, and then I'll let him talk about it, but it's called your, uh, and he's taught it to me. Mm -hmm. It's basically your unfair advantage. And and I'll let Diego talk a little bit about that. Yes. And this goes right back to in like, whether we do it in a business or investing with like houses, real estate, whatever, right? You have to understand what your unfair advantage is. For example, for Felipe, the idea guy for me, 
I'm a tech guy. So any idea that Felipe might have, hey, we need to do a website, we do this, we do emails, can we send out emails? Felipe has no idea what like active campaign, what MailChimp is. Like, yeah, like he has no idea. I do, right? So I basically, I'm the one that implements all that. If we take it to the real estate side, if if you get a partner that has the money, let's say you have like $300,000 like in cash, but have no time to be able to find deals and may not have the time to even know the market. You can partner up with somebody that number one has the time. So maybe find find somebody that's gonna bring you the deals. And then number two, find somebody too that knows the market very well, very well. And that way that becomes your unfair advantage. One fair advantage can be money. Unfair advantage can be time. Unfair advantage can be knowledge. But you have to partner up together in order to maximize the potential that one can do. I want to jump into a little bit about the what your partnership, what you actually partner in, right? We talked about mm-hmm. the partner and, and, and who works well and kind of the implementer versus the idea person. But uh, can you dive in a little bit deeper on the specifics of your partnership. Are we talking about your real estate partnership or you mentioned other businesses? Can you just cover all of the areas of what you're partnering in? Yeah. yeah for- glad, gladly. Okay. So <clears throat> we, I'm going to, I'm going to go 30,000 for view of what we do. So we have a mastermind. We have a company that helps people fix their credit so they can pull the best loans possible with the better rates. We have an e-commerce business where we teach people how to create second sources of income back with real estate. And then in a minute, I'm going to take it down 20,000 and tell you why we do it. So we have those three businesses, right? Am I missing one, Diego? No, I think those are what we have. Well, and, 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 then, then, we own a, and then we own a property together too. And then we own a rental property together. Okay. So this is the cool thing about, 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 um, having great partners. Okay. So follow me along a little bit. So let's take it down a step. So the reason we have our mastermind was because we saw there was a need for better, um, mentors for mentees at a very affordable spot with actual actionable steps. So we created Rat Race. In Rat Race, for example, Diego creates the Zoom links, Diego creates, uh, I get the speakers, and then Diego will send them all the information, like you guys sent me that email, all that. I wouldn't have no idea how to do that, right? So like I get the speakers, I talk them to come talk to Rat Race, and then I just pass them along to Diego. He sets up the meeting, he sets their Zoom link, he gets their information, he kind of makes the graphics, he sets it up, right? Something I would have no idea how to do. So that's 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 rat race. And then um, Diego like created the Slack where people can like talk to each other. Uh, when we have events like the retreat we just had in Destin, Florida, I give him the vision, dude, let's get a mansion off the beach. Let's make sure people are having a great time, but also learning. These are the speakers. Can we do something like this? And then boom, Diego's like, yes, okay, we get this. This is how we're gonna do it. This is where we're gonna get in. And then like he goes into action with my vision, right? So he trusts that my vision can get created or he'll tell me yes or no. Like, yes, Felipe, that's a good idea. This is how that's gonna work. This is how this can work. I'm gonna put it on a email blast, something that he says and makes it work, right? So that's kind of like how rat race is working in, in, in the way I, th- I think it works. I'm sure there's really technical stuff that Diego does to keep it together. But that's the power of like having a partnership that works well. And then from there, we're able to expand into other businesses together because we already know how we work. Right. And then I'll say one last thing and then I'll pass it over to Diego. And that is I have never seen a partnership that works well together where those same business partners don't have other businesses together because they already know they work well together. And I'll leave you with this thought. Think about a good musician always plays more than one instrument. Like the drummer knows how to play guitar and piano and like all this other stuff. He's mastered one, but he knows a lot. It's the same thing with partnerships. Once you've found a good partner that you mesh well with, you are going to be able to create other businesses successfully because you know your roles. And I'll dig into that a little bit later if you remind me, but I'll pass it on to Diego so he can tell a little bit about the other stuff. Yeah. So, and really quick too, the reason why I also partner up with Felipe, because it's really important, is that I saw what he was doing in the background. Like I was analyzing him already before he knew that we were going to be work, before we, we had the potential to work as a as a team to give you an example and again complementers i i know that consistency with social media makes the difference 
And when I saw that Felipe was posting every morning at like 7 a.m. a one minute video, it's something that I always wanted to do, but I just don't have that consistency. And I was like, and I messaged him after like a month and there, there, we, we hadn't talked about rat race yet or anything, but I'm like, dude, I really admire just your, your consistency because you keep on putting that content day in and day out every single day. And, um, and so that triggered me to be like, okay, I like the way that he works. I know that he's consistent, meaning that the discipline is there in order for him to take action. Right. So that was number one. Now, so we do have rat race. Um, we also have the credit repair agency and the company, and then we have the, the e-commerce stuff. Now, what's really important, and you, and you guys have heard me talk about the six, the six uh, areas to becoming the person that achieves financial independence, yeah. right? So I learned that from my mentors, and everything that we've built, the, the partnership that Felipe and I have is all based on that is how can we help other people become financially independent, sort of get out from the rat race to achieve FI, right? So, so yeah, that's why we have the credit repair to help people invest in real estate at a better rate. And then we have, if you guys remember, key number five in the six keys is, cre is increasing your income through a side hustle. Can you run us back with all six real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Really quick, number one is knowing your finances, how much money is coming in, how much is coming out. Number two is scheduling personal development. Number three is your peer group and your tribe, right? What is that? Rad race to FI, like a mastermind. It doesn't have to be rad race, but I'm telling you like, it has to be a mastermind group. Number four, accountability with goal setting, right? And that's, again, that's something, imagine you go every week to two Zoom calls and you have to share where you're at. And if you're not taking action, you're, you're, you're just going to quit, right? It's going to be awkward when it's the fourth call and you're like, yeah, I'm still thinking about the idea of how I want to invest. Like F that you're either in or you're out, right? Number five is increasing your income through a side hustle. And then number six, we put it together with investing in real estate for passive income or passive income overall. That's have to be real estate. But at the end of the day, that's how you can become financially independent. So if I'm hearing this correctly, all of these businesses, the e-commerce, um, you know, the rat race buy and, and the credit repair is actually you're doing this to fuel your real estate business or at some capacity fuel it. And so, maybe at one point they one overtakes the other, but the idea behind it was to help fuel your real estate portfolios. So we heard the same message or, or even I would hear the same message on Instagram, my followers, rat race. There was always three excuses. I'm scared, which means you don't have the right mentor or you, or you don't know enough knowledge. IE, we can fix that with rat race. Two, I don't have enough money because my night, my 40, 50 hour work week is taking everything. Okay, so now we're gonna help you fix that with e-commerce and we're gonna show you how to work an hour in the morning, work an hour in the afternoon, add an extra thousand bucks monthly to your, to your income. And then the third one was, well, my credit is not where it needs to be yet for me to start investing in real estate, i.e., okay, let us help you fix that with credit repair. So those were the top three excuses that we would consistently hear. And I think you guys could probably attest to that's probably the same thing you guys hear as well when people are like, I can't invest. It's one of those three things or a combination of two, typically. So Diego and I have, have always said, like, we wanted to start businesses together that's going to help alleviate that, that those roadblocks to real estate, right? I don't have enough money. I don't have enough credit or I don't have the right people in my life to help me through that. So we're creating businesses that can help people reach financial independence. Doesn't have to be through real estate, but obviously that's the route we have taken. So that's the message behind the three businesses. I love that. It's like a cycle. They all dip into mm -hmm. each other. And a hundred percent. You guys love that. Can you, so I know we, we always touch on real estate. We always touch, uh, I want to dive into rat race to five too, but I'm very intrigued with talking about the credit repair company and then also the e-commerce part of those two pillars that I think aren't touched on a lot. So, can you just maybe give us like a brief, I don't know, elevator pitch on like how you repair someone's credit and you don't have to go too far, but just to get a little taste of what you guys are doing in your business. Sure. So that, that one's really cool. And, and I'll tell you why we do, how we do both if you really want to, but the credit repair is interesting. And that was the last one we started because of like the grimy schmucky 
feel that some people get when they hear credit repair because i mean guys i'm super frank like you can be honest with me it sounds shady right <laughs> people are like oh like dude i get it it's cool like this is why we're like apprehensive to like go all in we like slowly are at <laughs> we slowly add clients we're doing a couple at a time um, but basically the way it works is so the first thing is education in credit repair. So when I get someone on the phone and I tell them, I'm like, first, did you know that the, the three credit bureaus, TransUnion, Experian, uh, like all three of them are privately owned. They are not government owned. And people are like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, they are not uh, government owned. They These are private entities from like rich folk or something that just supposedly just give your, you know, get your information and create yourself a credit score, right? Now, per the research that we've done and that we've been educated on, like almost all of the information that they get from you has been, it's not illegal, it's been acquired illegally because you haven't given permission for them to have it. But it's kind of like if your grass is too tall at your house, it doesn't break any laws until someone tells the city that you haven't cut your grass. It's not illegal until someone complains. It's the same concept. They can have your data. It's not until you request how they got your data that you're able to knock that off because they didn't acquire it correctly. Make sense? Yep. So then what we do is we go in, we send hundreds, or we, I don't know about hundreds, but we send a bunch of letters requesting documentation on how they got, i.e. certain inquiries or fill in the bank blank inquiry and say, hey, can you? we can we sh can you show me that you got that legitimately and if they can't then by law they have to remove that inquiry that's one way there's other ways that we do it as well i'm not going to give you the whole sauce i'll give you just a little bit of the juice i gave you the juice there's more to it but but in essence that's our, and then we're also very honest with people and i'm honest with people on the phone when i talk to them as well can i do this by myself felipe yes you can you do not need me to do this for you. Our services are more of a, um, um, like a, like a help to you. If you don't want to have to do this on your own, you're going to spend hours on the phone. You're going to send a lot of letters. They are not going to willingly remove inquiries. That's going to be really, really hard. You could you could tell us, and then we handle that end for you. Can you do this on your own? Yes, we are. We are transparent as can be. We, we're not here to steal anyone's money. And plus when we did this, we also, ask the company that we partnered with, hey, we're gonna offer 110% back guarantee. So if for any reason we cannot help you, not only do we give you your money back, but you're gonna get 10% of our profit as well. So you're gonna get back $100 or whatever it is back as well on top. Because we don't wanna be that company that like scams people, so. Especially in, the, in that type of business too, because it, it's, it, yeah, exactly. it has a stigma to it, so very yeah. hard. It's, it's hard to explain credit scores and like, it's almost like a financial snapshot of you, like what banks can see and to, to identify if you're worth the risk essentially, right? Yep. Can you yes. talk, and it's super important for real estate. So can you talk about what a credit score uh, is comprised of and then why it's important for someone young or old to rebuild their credit or have a strong credit score in order to push for their loans, ex basically for their loans. And I'll let Diego talk about this cause he's the realtor, how important is having good credit to get loans and how it can affect you if you have a, a low credit or a high credit for what you're going to pay on that loan. But I'll let Diego talk about that. Yeah, for sure. So the, the, the main things, and there's like five or six different areas with, with the credit, but it's definitely the way that you like how much you use based on what you can get into debt and based on what you use. Right. So if you the ideal situation is to use less than 30 percent at any time of your credit cards, to give you an example. Um, so it's the usage of your credit, the history of your credit, how many inquiries you might have in the periods of time. And uh, and there's like a f there's a few others. But here's a cool thing. Right. Uh, is that we've so that partnership is with somebody else. Again, in this case, I don't know that much. Felipe may not also know 100% of everything, but the guy that we've partnered up with, he does. And we just need to know enough to be dangerous, but not to, not to actually be the expert on it, right? The value and, of the um, on the show, right? The value of the partnership that you have with somebody else who's the knowledge you guys might exactly. bring counsel or something exactly. of that in this business. If we can mm -hmm. dive into the 
And if you have more to say on that, go ahead. After I'd well, like to dive into the e-commerce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the one of the important things though with 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 like the reason why we're doing this with the credit and everything is because like there's a difference if somebody for for example if they can if they can qualify for a conventional loan let's say with a 640 credit score or a 760 credit score they're gonna save hundreds hundreds of dollars a month probably be just because of the way that their interest rate is and that is really, really, really important because that's like the debt that you're paying and don't even get me started with like an FHA loan because the FHA loan like that, you cannot remove the PMI out of it until you refinance, right? So imagine that you can get a home with an FHA, like if you're getting a duplex, triplex or quadplex, FHA is a way to go, right? Because you can get it with three and a half percent down. But if you have the choice to get into a single family with a conventional loan that you can get it like a 700 credit score rather than an FHA that starts at five, like a 580, you're going to be able to save so many thousands of dollars a year if you add it up. So keep that in mind. Maybe spending 400 bucks to do credit repair, it's not that much when you think of the thousands of dollars that you're going to be saving in the future with just right. one asset. I mean, you have your car, you have like so many different things. I think of that too, like right, so right when I got out of school, for example, right? Like you, when any, or when anyone gets out of school and they haven't had a job, like they're, you're still, you have to establish your credit or start to establish your credit at some point. So you, you typically start with like a starter card and then you keep that as like an anchor, right? And you continually build your credit along the line, whether you, get, uh, whether you have student loans, whether you have um, a, a car loan, and then you work your way up to a mortgage. But to your point, basically like, and I, I can't do the math out this quickly, but I'm thinking about like a conventional 30 year mortgage. If you have a 600 credit score, you're going to have a drastic, say you get a 5% interest rate. Mm -hmm. If you have a 760 credit score, you might get a 3.5% interest rate. And then over the longevity of the loan, you're going to save hundreds of thousands of dollars, potentially just purely Easy. Your credit Easy. by going to, potentially you guys to repair that early on. That's exactly. It, right? Yes. That's, that's, that's exactly right. Like if that's the educational message that we want to put out basically, like, look, it's going to cost you this amount up front and it's going to hurt and that's okay. Or you can have this hurting for the next 30 years because unless you refinance when your credit is better, you've spent hundreds of dollars annually paying for this bad credit or you could pay to fix it once and in three to five months bang your credit scores at 750 760 and you're going to get the better loans the best loans are right at that 750 to 780 mark and like potentially we can get you there if you can pull loans at that you're going to be way better off than pulling loans at like a low 600 Perfect. You guys are looking for an intern. I'm available. So. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, really quick, just like an extra hack for 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 the audience here. Oh, you're here. giving away the sauce, Diego. Well, just a little bit. This is a good right, hack. Go for it. Okay, this is a good okay, hack. Okay. This is a good hack. It is uh, for for the history, for like the a way that you can increase your credit history. Let's say that you just got out of college or you're in high school, whatever. Um, you can, if your parents have decent credit, you can ask them to add you as an authorized user on one of their credit cards. Got it. And after a few months, instead of, let's say you getting your first credit card at 20 years old, now you can, if they add you to a credit card that they have three or four years worth, um, now you can have four years worth of credit history. Not many people know that. And you don't even it's piggybacking. Yeah. And they don't even have to give you the credit card if they don't want to, unless your parents are nice enough. Be like, here you go. But <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, just by being an authorized user on the account, you can get a lot of his a, a lot more history time. And that's especially if they're good with keeping up with every single payment and things like that. That's, that's an incredible hack, actually. Mm -hmm. and I, yeah, that's great. I think the ears perked up on probably some of our listeners when they heard Felipe say. Yeah, an hour here in the morning, maybe an hour in the evening, you might be able to add $1,000 a month to to a side hustle, right? You talked about these pillars. Um, one of the major ones is the credit, and you guys have that handled. Then the side hustles kick in with this e-commerce business and that you've partnered together on. Can you talk a little bit about 
e-commerce is so broad. Like, what are you guys even doing? And how, <laughs> and how are you doing it? And how can other people latch onto this business on the side of a nine to five or full time once they're financially free? Great question. So on e-commerce, we basically we sell Diego's used clothes to people that are fans of his. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Really? Yeah, I, this this guy. Guy. I really like that sweater. <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> <It's G-rated. laughs> What's going on? Oh, hey, guys, it's G-rated, guys. This is, there's kids oh, listening, guys. Let's, get, let's calm it down. Let's calm it down. Now, so... Um, E-commerce, let me tell you how the story started and then I'll dig into exactly what you're talking about. So basically what happened was I had another crazy ass idea. I called Diego at like 10 or 11 p.m. one night. And <laughs> he's not as that because it's true. And I was like, Diego, I have an idea. It's going to make us a ton of money, but I cannot do this alone. I need you to do this with me. It's called e-commerce and I know a guy that does it like uh, professionally for the last seven years, travels the world doing it. It makes him this amount of money. I don't have all the details yet, but are you down? And he said, we can dig into it, but yes, I'm in there. And the reason, back to partnerships, the reason he was able to say yes on the spot is because he already knows how I work with Rat Race to Fi. So it was easier for him to make a business decision with me knowing what I brought to the table and knowing that our strengths and weaknesses align, right? So it was easier for him to make that decision and then just say, okay, we'll figure it out along the way. I think I can implement some things to make this work. Let's dig into it. Fast forward to now. Um... What we do is e-commerce, but what we do is we call, it's called drop shipping. So we sell products from one store on another platform. When users of said platform order from us, we then go in back end order product directly to consumer. We take a cut in the middle. Sometimes we sometimes don't even take a cut in the middle and we make money on the back end. And I can dig really deep if you guys are interested, but that's essentially how the e-commerce model works. And, and, and people make their money on the sale, not necessarily profit from, from selling A to person B, but the, 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 the money in the middle. And there's a lot of money in the middle that people just don't realize. And I didn't even realize until we jumped into e-commerce. Now, people are going to want to know, well, Felipe, you're a real estate guy. And so is Diego. How did you guys learn and find e-commerce? The quick story is there's a gentleman online. His name is Christian Trujillo. Shout out to my boy. Love him to death. He's a great partner of ours now. He's been doing it professionally for the last seven to eight years outside of these like gurus you see on Instagram. They're like, we're going to make you a hundred million dollars in nine months. Like you're going to be rich for the rest of your life. And then like, you don't hear anybody's story except theirs. So I was like, cut the BS dude. I want to find the real deal. So we met up with Christian. We basically uh, met in Austin. Diego took us out to like wine country in Austin, a little town out there. Uh, we had a great weekend together, just the guys in a, in, a, in a little house that we rented out there. And he showed us how it worked. And we were like, okay, we are in. So he showed us how to do e-commerce. We showed him how to do real estate. Now he's got rental properties. We have an e-commerce store and we've created now a three-way partnership on the e-commerce And from there, Diego and I said, we need to show this to our rat race members and the world at a very affordable price, not these $30,000 gurus, but more of a scaled where it still makes sense for us because we got to be on private Zoom calls with people for, you know, I don't know, three, four months, sometimes two, three hours at a time. So I, I can be super transparent if Diego allows me. And if he says no, just cut this part out. But we charge 5,000 bucks and they get to keep their store. They keep all their profit and they get to keep everything that comes on the back end of that as well. You will not. And I have quite a bit of followers on Instagram and I have yet to find a course that doesn't do one of two things. Either charges you 30K up front or takes 30% of your profit. So it's either or or sometimes even both. So what we found out was like, what is our time worth? How can we make this affordable for the average person where they won't just like pay a thousand bucks and I'm not going to do that and then forget about it, but actually takes action. And then we came up at that price and, and, and we show people how to do this. Uh, and I'll just say one more thing and then I'll pass it back on. Most people ask me, well, Felipe, how quickly am I going to make my money back? If you do it the way we teach you and don't fall outside of what we teach, potentially your profits will be from, or I'm sorry, you'll make your money back six to nine months after just based on what we've seen from this first class. And the reason I know that is I actually have a spreadsheet from one of the girls that's in the class and I'm seeing her run and what we did as well. You're going to make your money back in six to nine months. 
and the rest of your life, the store is profit, 100% yours. And the drop shipping, just for people that don't know, essentially what you're doing is you're not, by drop shipping, you're not holding inventory, right? So you make money. No inventory. Sale. There's, there's no upside. You don't have to have an upfront cost to have inventory. But that $5,000 that you charge is essentially to coach them, right? That's what you're providing. The, the coaching of the X amount of months through the first phase of getting the, uh, the, their business off the ground, correct? Right? Yeah, because they got to have, and Diego can dig into a little bit more of the technical part behind what we teach because I have no idea. <laughs> this guy. No, no, but yeah, so we we have the group coaching for $5,000, which again, there's guys that are charging thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, which is easy, which is crazy. I'm sure you guys have seen it. And, sure. uh, and then, so that's for the group coaching. And then we have just the courses as well which is just the videos that you learn exactly the same thing but there's one when you're in a zoom call that again that like accountability again right it's like you're on a zoom call it is in it's in your schedule and then you get it done but wh one of the things that's very important the reason why i thought that why we've partnered up with christian with felipe is like integrity and uh, and being able like if we are going to show something to people we may we need to make sure that we have successfully implemented it it's not just like hey let me do this and let me sell you something right but it's more because right now it's very easy to hear some people that are in real estate that are not that are not doing this but and we i so the after we made like four thousand dollars in gross sales monthly for a couple of months and then we made it to 12,000 and 14,000 when Felipe was like hey we should teach this I was like sure let's do it but if we would have made 500 bucks a month and to teach that I was like dude it's not there like we 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 wouldn't be able to yeah but now that we've like we started this during COVID in May or June of 2020 and by by November, we've already sold like fifty thousand dollars worth of product. So, I don't know, Felipe wanted me to share that, but I just did. <laughs> and, uh, I guess we're there. <laughs> yeah, but so, at the end, of, and by the end of the year, we did seventy-five thousand, right? Uh, in our first year, doing it part-time, side business, like you heard, complete side hustle. You heard my, my like what I shared. I sold 56 homes last year. We created a mastermind with Felipe. Like he's busy. He has a family. I'm busy with my stuff. Like we're busy. And then we were able to create this, which is really cool. So that's what happened. And that's what I think one of the reasons why we wanted to continue to create this, which is to help other people do it as well in the mornings or in the evenings. Because it just makes it super easy. Okay. Okay. I got one for you. So you, you talked about integrity and or you mentioned the word integrity. And I think that's huge because there's a lot of people that you can easily partner with people and, you know, people will say, Hey, I'll throw X, Y, Z at you or I'll, or I want to bring you in on this deal. And you're like, you have to, once you have a certain name established for yourself or, or you have a business, people are going to come to you. And I think it's important to vet certain people out and talk about that beliefs and values and like who's a good person you know like we've had a couple issues so far not really issues but like we maybe just like someone that's come on the show and we've interviewed and we might maybe didn't want to release an episode purely based on it didn't align with our vision but it's also like we don't want to put that message out there because it's not not that we don't believe that other people should have their own opinions and we don't want we don't have to agree with everything but it's just like it came from a place that we, we really didn't think was a good one and so mm -hmm. to like project that onto others, I think that's really cool with you guys is saying like, Hey, if we didn't make this amount of money, it wasn't proven. We're not going to toss this out into the marketplace because there's no validity there. And I think people need to realize that there's so much crap out there that you can invest your money in, but it's very, and it's very hard to find people that are good. I wouldn't say it's hard, but like you need to do your research and due diligence to find the people that are good people that are going to take care of you and be the right mentor specifically our coach. Um, like Diego, Corey and I, after your episode, we just talked about it and we just like, we just kind of sat there and paused a little bit. We're like, you can tell a good guy from a bad guy in like five seconds. But like, as your episode got better, it's like, dude, I want that guy to be my best friend. Like he's the nicest <laughs> guy in the world. But also we could tell you care about your business, care about your people, care about your mentors and like the world getting better as a whole around you. And I think that's 
just not to completely like stroke your ego there, but you, mm-hmm. I, I think you guys are a great partner, great together because of that, and you bounce each other, bounce off each other well. Not only because mm-hmm. you complement each other, but because you're good people and you get it. When I say get it, you mean uh, you want to better the world and not just yourselves, and that, that's mm-hmm. very important to us as well. So, kind of yeah. what I'm to say about. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to say something on that, and and so integrity is really important to us, but with that you also in because this 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 episode is about partnerships as well you got to be able to be humble enough to accept um like when your when your partner is talking to you about integrity as well right like oh dude let's do a ten thousand dollar product and make as much money as we can yada yada yada. and it's like dude what is the framework of what we're doing you know or if someone's trying to fluff numbers yo dude you're gonna make a million dollars if you do our product it's like dude that's not true actually i just remembered Diego's called me out before, right? I can be vulnerable here. I've been on a live and like said numbers, just not thinking out loud, like just not thinking. And Getting Diego called almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and that's just who I am. And Diego called me after and I was like, hey, dude, like great live. Like you were awesome. Dude. Like you killed it. Like that was really good. But those aren't our true numbers. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, and he was like, dude, that wasn't honest. And I was like, you're right. I, I, I maybe fluffed here. Just like think not thinking. And just like going and i'm like dude you're right I'll, I'll 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 try to like be better next time right so part of that is the integrity as well like do you have the the what's the word the personality the the jive like can you accept also when someone flashes their integrity and says hey dude that wasn't right and it's like you know what dude you're right and i want to build our relationship on integrity and not on fluffed numbers right so like as a person can you accept that as well and be humble enough to say he was right and i was wrong that's the accountability piece too right the 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 ability to not only try to correct somebody when they're making a mistake but having the and you said it the humility to know that that same exact thing is going to be turned around on you when you make a mistake and if you think you're going to go and not making them then don't get into partnerships in the first yeah. place because they're going to happen and i think that's kind of the beauty of it to have two brains instead of one try to figure something out and that's what i've noticed where in the partnership that ryan and i have i'll ask him almost too many times about specific ideas just to see if he's thinking about it slightly different and it sounds like you guys being one's an implementer one's a one's an idea person you probably have different ideas that help you come to the right decision so that's very cool i'd like to talk a little bit about the st- actual structure of your partnership because we get questions all the time like you know should we get this llc or how should we do it do you need a lawyer like wh- there's a lot of questions about uh, putting the partnership together. So I, I'm sure that your partnerships vary depending upon the business, but maybe if you even talk about the, the real estate specifically, like the, 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 the property that you own together, mm-hmm. have you formed an LLC? Do you divide and conquer tasks? Now that's a small percentage of your portfolio. So maybe you already have a system that you just implement in from one of your other ones, but can you just talk about the real estate and any of the other businesses and how you, the partnerships and how they're structured? Yeah. Um, so on, so I own a property with Felipe in Antioch, Tennessee. I do not know that area. Like I actually have been to, to hang out with Felipe twice in Nashville. Well, more like a few times and I haven't gone to the property yet. I'm like, holy crap, Felipe, we totally forgot to at least drive by it. Right. So there has to be that trust. Number one, based on again, that we complement each other in this from 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 this perspective for example last year felipe couldn't qualify for any more loans so then again my unfair advantage came in and i was like dude the bank can lend me loans let's see if we can work something out number one number two the market in austin is booming like crazy and i like to invest for cash flow not much appreciation so Austin was out. So for me, that means that I need to partner up with in, or invest in another area where there is cash flow. And in getting to know Felipe and the way that he invests and all this other stuff, that became his unfair advantage, right? His unfair advantage was that he knew the area very well and he can invest in a very creative way as well to maximize the cash flow 
in the real estate of buying a single family home. He converts it into a duplex and goes from there. Now, as a partner, again, from me, I, because of the fact that it wasn't Felipe's first, like his first, uh, e, like it, it wasn't his first house. And also what I wasn't his first, if I'm not getting this wrong, Felipe, you've, you've invested with three other people before me or, or at least two, uh, right? In the real estate, you mean? Yeah. in the same real yes. estate in the same style homes, yeah. two other people. Yeah. Yeah. So by that time I was a third. So like, I knew that he already, like he already proved it again, going with like, Hey, let me invest with somebody or let me create something with somebody that has, that has been there already, that has the experience, right? So that for me was very important. So we took my unfair advantage, which at that time was I could get loans, and then Felipe, his unfair advantage was he cash knew flow. the market, created more cash flow than what other people could do, and then we figured how we could put it together. So our partnership with the numbers on this end is more I put in so the properties the, the the loan is in my name, but Felipe and I are both owners on the deed, right? Of that property. I put sixty percent down of the down payment, Felipe put in forty, and Felipe also put in um and then we we also split forty sixty the the renovation, but then cash flow becomes fifty fifty and he manages the property. That's so cool. Like just the formation of that, because a lot of people think that there has to be a specific way that you do it. Like this is, you have to do it this way. This is the best way. When people ask us, and I give them this advice, you know, in the space, they say, what's the best way to do it? I said, I, a lot of times I'm like, I don't know your situation. I've never even thought of doing a 40, 60 split, uh, you know, and then having a 50, 50 cash flow where one person takes on more of the, of of the management so i love that I and, really and i'm going to piggyback a little bit on what diego said <clears throat> in regards to like the partnership part of it as well the reason diego has come to nashville a couple times and not even seen the property is because it's not on his mind and that is the power of a great partnership so i want your listeners to listen to this in my partnerships i want my partners to be eager to answer my phone call because it'll always be a positive call Cash flow is good. This is good, whatever. Or if I if it is a negative thing, it's the situation has already been handled. This is what it's going to cost us. Here's the bill. Can you update the spreadsheet? We're good, right? So I, my job is to manage the property as as flowy as possible and literally just write Diego a check for his cash flow every month because that is my responsibility. So he does. I bet he doesn't even remember he has property here in Antioch until he's like, oh, wait, I was in Antioch. I probably should have gone and seen that. Right. Because he's never had to think about it before. It's not like, hey, Diego, the tenant called me and and uh, and the and, and the toilet's overflowing. What do you want me to do? Well, dude, you live there. Like, I don't know, call a plumber, right? Like, so I just called Diego and say, Hey Diego, here's the receipt from the home Depot that this got fixed. Yada, yada, yada. Can you update? Yeah, sure. Doesn't have to think about it. Cause he's naturally as good at that portion of it. Or Hey Diego filters got, you know, got, uh, got changed today. Here's a receipt. You know, everything's great. Cool. This is, this is exact this. I'm so glad you said this because Ryan and I were brought an opportunity of an investor we know in Ohio, and we are thinking about potentially sp splitting this, um, it's like a, a package of, of single family and multifamily homes. And we're talking about, we're going through the deal and you know, our job would be to do the accounting. We're going to split it one third, one third, one third. And then the other person, the other investor's job would, he'd have a third in it, but his job would be to manage it or also manage the management company. So that's very similar. And it's, it's just a creative way to say, let's divide and conquer. What are the tasks that need to get done? And I bet Felipe, or I bet Diego is ecstatic that he doesn't have to deal with you calling him like, okay, uh, Felipe, this is, this is you know, written in our agreement that this is what you're going to handle. I got the accounting or I got the systems, or that, that type of thing. So it's, it's, it's wonderful because I know what feels heavy to me personally. Like, and I'm sure that was part of the agreement. Like what feels heavy to you, also proximity. But there's a lot of things that goes into it. And to play on the strengths, everyone can win. And, and just talking about the formation really quick, I know you guys broke it down for us, but I assume it is under the guise of an LLC. And then you had this written out in an operating agreement, or is that not true? Not at all. Not I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. It, it will be, and it probably should be eventually. 
but it is not. Um, we just have so much going on that that ha that's just kind of like on the back burner. But but it definitely has to be, and it, and it will be done that way. For now, we've just we. But a lot of people think you can invest without doing that. So <laughs> yes. like, you're living proof that's like no, action is more important just... than theory. Let's let's write that down. Exactly. Someone put that on a tweet. Action is more important than theory. I don't need an LLC to partner with with Diego because not even an LLC is going to save us if we like sue each other. Like that's going to happen if that's going to happen. But more important than that, like we've said earlier, is the integrity. Right? You can't you can't put integrity on paper, right? I would be okay if Diego, we went this 30 year mortgage and never created an LLC. We're going to probably do it more for the formality and like the legality and to keep all of our other stuff safe. Diego's going to get married one day, you know, and have kids. And like, so, so yes, we will do it. And I'm not saying everyone should do what we did unless you're airtight with your partner. But Diego and I are so interwebbed now and stuff that we do, like it would, oh, it would be really dumb of us not to. So yes, we're going to. And this is one of those like monkey say monkey do situations. Like, don't do it the way we did it. Do it, do it, LLC, do it all the legit way. But Diego and I just have so much going on that it's like, it's kind of on the back burner. But, but yes, to answer totally. your question. And, but all the other businesses, like the real businesses, they are all in LLC. Everything like else is. EINs and yes. everything. It's just everything this real estate property. We don't have one like, like that because you can actually just create that right away. Right. Like at the end of the day, um, you can transfer. Exactly. It. So but for us to for like from from this perspective and we like in the beginning, it was just good for us. Like we just needed to act quick from that perspective. There was no like, hey, but the we should was this, too we should good to like give up. It was like, dude, this is a great opportunity. Diego, we're going to make like fourteen hundred bucks in cash flow monthly. Like we just don't have time to create an LLC. We got to move on this or I'm going to lose this deal. And we just was like, do, do, do. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. And you talked about, so I'm just thinking to your portfolio specifically, Felipe, 18 doors and like adding another property for 14. I mean, I guess you split it 50, 50, it'd be 700 each in, in cash flow. but that's, that's a big hit. That's like, I don't know. What do you, what do you want to call that? Like a triple home run. That's a, that's, oh, that's a great, deal. that's a great deal. Yeah, that's a great deal um, for anybody. So, yeah, we, we talked to a bunch of different investors about like what types of portfolios they build, right? Like some want to do small but mighty. Some are heavy on units. Like, can you just briefly talk about your 18 unit portfolio and just like what you specifically look for? I don't want to get too deep yeah. in it, but just to give perspective so, of that. When deal. I first started listening to Bigger Pockets, I didn't understand the hundred dollars a door thing. I was like, what? That's a hundred dollars in cash flow a door, like that's normal. Yeah, that's not gonna work, Hoss. I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna get ten thousand doors. Like, that's not gonna work for me. So what I did was um my parents got divorced when I was young. My mom renovated her basement and that's how she paid for her mortgage, right? So freed up nine hundred dollars. She added bedrooms and a bathroom downstairs, rented it out to construction workers. You guys can go listen to my weekly juice podcast that we did a couple months back and figure out my story. Episode sixteen. Sixteen, there you go. He was first on this one too. I don't know. Man. That could be wrong. I beat Diego on this one too. What, what is it? Yeah, we were like forty-two. I didn't know. Uh, it's a little late. Uh, Diego was you 40. Go back 40. and listen to mine, and then Diego's. Anyways, so thirty thousand foot view to where I'm at now. Basically, what I do is I buy a single family home with a basement, and then I convert the basement to um, a two or three bedroom, added a kitchen and a bathroom, and then I rent it completely separate to someone else. So. My numbers work out to where I have to break even on the top because that's what Nashville is doing right now. You're only going to break even. Uh, you're not going to really make any cash flow, maybe $100. And that was like the 1% rule that people are going for. But I was like, that's not going to work. I need to maximize every corner of every single house because my partners are also going to appreciate that too. So I can, if I bring a person, if I bring one of my partners a deal, they know that they're going to basically make what upstairs makes downstairs as well. And that's going to be free cash flow. So every one of my houses, does close to eleven hundred dollars in cash flow. My best one, this is gonna blow your mind. My best one does about nineteen hundred dollars in cash flow. And this is a single family home. Yep, and, and that's by adding those rooms. That it was episode twenty six, by the way, so, not sixteen. So for people that go back, but by adding those rooms, staying under the same mortgage, the economies of scale, it just really works in your favor. Exactly. And especially if you're doing rehabs where you're probably not having a lot of maintenance up front, it's just it's you found a sweet spot and just you know keep swinging the bat there well we would love to we have some opportunities in new jersey that that 
uh, potentially could be either adding units or turning commercial into residential. And that is really how, um, you know, you can make a lot of money. So I love it. It really is. I, I before we go past this, I, thinking about back to the LLC and, and just big picture or your partnership, rather, you mentioned this in your previous episode, episode 26, Felipe. Um, can you talk about your mantra of big, thinking big picture, like, and just dr- driving home, like, when I see an opportunity, I'm taking it. Like a lot of people kind of go through and overanalyze and, and go with a fine tooth comb through everything. And I don't mean like, Hey, I'm not going to run the numbers properly, but like, can you talk about the balance of thinking big picture and also knowing that your numbers are ran the right way and, and kind of, you don't have to optimizing? lie to us. You told us that you don't even run the numbers. Mm, okay, so it's all good, great. man. So somebody was listening. I was like, dude, are you really asking me this on your podcast? You sure you want me to tell this? Okay. So I don't, run like like uh here are my numbers <laughs> like it's on a notepad on dude a notepad. i i'm like okay i know the mortgage is this i know the rents are this i know or i'm sorry i know what the mortgage is i know what the insurance is and i know what the taxes are is there anything else that i'm supposed to know utilities. like maybe utilities and stuff yeah like, utilities capex. um and then the capex maintenance vacancy those three yeah no i, like I, I yeah no I, I don't i don't do any of that number. so i literally i'm like okay this is what the mortgage is I have to have this amount of rent every single month to cover my rent, my insurance, and my taxes. If I can do that monthly, then this house is going to work because the downstairs is going to give me the same amount as the upstairs, right? So I know that I have $1,400 monthly to play with. So, and because I'm not like an A student like Diego, I don't know about like cash on cash, ROI. Like, like if you ask me about those things, I'm going to freeze because I have no idea. All I know is that when I was younger, real estate saved our lives literally because we didn't have money to eat. So I know this to be true because I had to live like it had to work for me, if that makes sense. Like, like a vacancy would yeah. have literally destroyed our family one month of vacancy we would have lost our house basically. So I know this model works because <laughs> I, I've said this only on a couple of podcasts. Cause I don't think anyone's asked me the way you guys asked me. I asked my mom <clears throat> and I get chills because it still freaks me out. And like, I, I get emotional. I asked my mom one time, I was like, mom, what happened in 08? How did we like get through 08? Like, you know, the crash, right? Like I was like, how did we get through that? Like, I don't, I don't really remember. And, and my mom, with like dead dead stare said what happened in 2008 because of the way we rent she didn't feel anything from 2008 because we always had a a backlog of tenants basically so when i heard that like not a fear of not an ounce of fear in her voice i was like oh yeah dude this is this is the way that i'm going to invest in antioch tennessee and I Diego, have we ever had a vacancy? I think once we had didn't have a, a room rented or something. Yeah, since we've it done was just a one. Yeah, it was yeah, one. I think one, one time we haven't had a, a vacant a, a thing, and ever since then we've cash flowed like hard every month. Diego, do you have a diff? Just while we're I have you guys side by side on this, do you run your deals differently? It's just cool to get two yeah. different perspectives on like, you know, bigger picture and maybe just like yeah. fine grain. It's funny it. because Felipe said this about like, about like the A and B unit and how he converts that with my house hacks in Austin. I do it the same way. I had no idea in the beginning what my cash on cash was or anything. All I knew in Austin is like, look, if you get a four bedroom in Austin, you're going to cash flow, like you're going to gross around 25 to $3,000. You can figure out the rest. Like at the end of the day, right? If I'm doing more one-on-one, like if I'm investing more for like a single family, more long-term and all this other stuff, then I'm very much more like, what are the numbers, the vacancies, if it's going to be property managed and all of that stuff. But in the beginning, it's more, look, if I'm going to be investing by the room, what does it get me? And what would it look like if the mortgage if I had to pay the mortgage with just a single family home. I really, when I analyze those kinds of deals, I don't really get too picky with the CapEx and I know I know I and all this other stuff. Um, Yeah, I don't know if it's like we don't run those numbers and we got lucky between Felipe and I from that perspective. But it's like because of the way that we get creative, um, like we just do it. And I don't know if it's. Yeah, are you? 
Sorry, are you always doing value adds to each property? Is that, or is it just, I think you guys just know your market, right? That's what it really is. At the end is. of the day, like, mm -hmm. you know what's going to work. It's not like you're you're not taking a shot in the dark. Exactly. You know this place. So I think that's Yeah, and what's, what's interesting, and this will take me to say something else too, but Felipe and I, for example, when I invest in Austin, I've only have invested myself in new homes or remodel homes. Like right now, I, I, I own two new homes. My first house hack was fully remodeled. And then I'm on the contract on another new build right now. And I'm going to be working on getting Felipe on, on, on a new build too here in Austin. But for, I, I invest that way because I am not handy. I don't have time to go through all of that stuff. Felipe, on the other hand, he does create that value add. Right. But it's because he knows his market. And I know that for me, if I buy a home in North Austin, for example, I can rent by the room day one tenants paying around 700 bucks. And I know that because it becomes super easy. And Felipe knows his market very well that it will cost him X amount of money to put in like to to put in two two bedrooms in the garage and boom, boom, boom. He has a kitchen and that's it. Cool. So you talked about your competitive advantage there, and that, like that's directly correlates to what you're talking about. If you can learn for, for for new investors, for people who want to get started and want to know where, you can just learn a market. If you pick a market, now maybe don't go to Manhattan, right, or San Francisco, but pick a market, learn it like the back of your hand, and then you become your own competitive advantage by knowing what you can can do, what you can get away with, what the rents are, and how you can make money in your specific area. I think that that's that's kind of like the golden ticket there. There's so many different ways to make money. We, Ryan and I haven't done value adds. We're, that's not our expertise in the area that we invest in. We know what we can make money doing, and that's how we plan on scaling our portfolio. But when you invest at a state, you rely on the knowledge of the people who live there or the management or the systems that are in place in that area. So. It's, it's not to say that value adds won't be in the properties that we, we just yeah, haven't, we just haven't done it yet. Yeah, yeah. The potentially the one that we're going to see tomorrow, that's a huge one. It's, yeah. you know, he has an old, I don't want to get too into it, but he has like an old barbershop that's attached to a single family home. And it's, it's really, it looks cool. like it was straight out of the seventies. So it's like, there's a lot of potential. Then to... the, a, a, a detached garage too. There's like so many different things you can play with. And that's exciting, right? Like, even if it's, you know, we're obviously going to run the numbers the right way, but it, it just makes it more fun than here. Oh, here's a single family. Let's just rent it out. Um, it's just more creative. I want to, we didn't dive too far into this and I think we kind of went backwards with all your businesses, but I do want to get into rat race to fi because I saw some of the videos you guys are posting about, um, your retreat mm -hmm. in Florida. I believe it's Florida. And it's just seemed like <laughs> I wanted to be there. So, um, can you walk us through the inception of it? I know you t touched on this at the beginning of the episode. We we're having some audio difficulties. So like just the inception of why you created it and then kind of what, like walk us through it in the different pillars of, of it, like who you help out, what courses people can take, how, I don't know if you want to dive into costs and things like that, but like, and then maybe all the way into the retreat and like why you guys got together. Yeah. In person. Uh, yeah. I can, I can dig into that for sure. So like I said, at the top, I'm not ashamed of this at all and I never will be, and I won't hide it. We started Rat Race because I we believed that the mentors, like when you look at a mentor or, or, or the average, okay, the average, and this is proven day in, day out, the average real estate investor is a 55-year-old white man. That That's just what the average real estate investor totally. was or is, right? Like uh, the 30,000 worldview. We also felt like we weren't maybe as represented as we should. And like, we were like, man, we got to help the Latino community. We got to help the African-American community. We got to help the minority community, but we help everyone. No one's excluded, but we wanted to create a safe place for like DACA recipients like Diego, right? Someone that was like, can I invest here? Should I invest here? Like, no, dude, you can. Like we wanted to create a safe environment where people could say, hey, those guys look like me and I relate to them because that was the main DM that I got after my Bigger Pockets episode. Holy crap, another Latino doing it, right? So that's why Rat Race got started. Now, what we do is we have, and we actually got our call in like 15 minutes. We have our, our, our Zoom calls Monday and Wednesday. And we have an hour to two hours. And then there's something called Diego after hours, where basically Diego stays after and just hangs out and talks with people. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah so dude, he just sits, just sits there sits and slow. like, Love it. Heck, a yeah, candle the in the background, fireplace, maybe. <clears throat> anyway, so 
we basically on Mondays, what we do is we have open office hours, just like if you're in college and your professor had the open door policy where you could come in, ask questions and then leave. We do the same thing. Like you're welcome to come into the Zoom, ask whatever question you have. Hey, uh, you know, dude, I'm really having a problem with like a good realtor and I don't know why. So Diego digs into that and everyone gets to like listen to your, your, your issue right now and maybe take something from that. And that's what we do on Mondays. Wednesdays, we have a speaker come in or one of us uh, and do realignment meetings or, or mindset things or, you know, hey, this is I'm a professional Airbnb. But here's the difference with what we do and what everyone else does. A lot of people will have speakers come in to stroke their own ego. We have speakers come in to give our people actionable steps. Hey guys, I do Airbnb. Da, 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 da. Okay, that's great. I actually don't care about that. Can you tell us how you do it so that our members can mimic that? Because I don't care that you have a hundred doors. I want to know how you got those doors. Can you tell us the story? I don't care how big your head is. I want to actually know how my members can take actionable steps to do this. And this is this is why we're good at it because we don't pay our speakers. Either you're going to come do this for free so that you can add value to our people or we're giving you money. It's one or the other, right? Like if I'm paying you, I need you to like get my people hyped up and like yada, yada, yada. It's like, no, you're coming for free. We're going to give you some Instagram clout and Instagram clout from rat race does something. People do get a ton of followers, but like we want to know how to do this. So like our members were like, dude, we want to find off market deals. Like, like we, we want to wholesale. We want to do this stuff. So we're like, great. We got Ryan Dossie to come speak. Not just that. We ended up getting a, a prop stream representative in the evening at eight and nine o'clock at night to come and tell everyone exactly how to use prop stream, how to find cash buyers, off market deals, et cetera. We, 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 I trained a guy that I'm training now to help me with prop stream and he shows people how to cold call, how to find cash buyers, Adam, you know, like how to do mm -hmm. all these things. So in our mastermind, the way we're different and I pride myself on this and you can tell by the way I'm talking about it is that we are not a course that's going to be like, okay, it's $200 to get in and then $700 to do this. And then our inner circle is $1,500. No, the whole course is going to cost you less than $2,500 a year. If I'm doing my math right, it's going to cost you less than $2,500 for the whole year. And you're going to get like 110 calls um, a year. You're going to get like private one-on-one -on -one calls with us basically right you're gonna get a slack channel with everyone in the community you're gonna get a, a like 10 15 hours of recorded video from diego answering one of our most asked questions you're gonna get access to our private facebook and i'm not gonna spend the next 10 minutes talking about everything you're gonna get but it just keeps going we also do uh buy er, er, we do two retreats or three a year where we get together and bring top players in the game to talk about the most requested questions. So like you just talked about Instagram, our videos for our retreat, we had Philip, the CEO of a company called Albin in Georgia that he manages over a thousand homes with his partners or with his, with his business. So he's a very experienced property manager that's in rat race to fi. So automatically you're going to have that connection. We had, uh, we had a bunch of speakers talk about things that they're really good at, right? We had Ryan Dossie there, we had Ashley Kerr there, and we right. had a bunch of other people. But mainly, we wanted, to, like I said, create a safe environment for people to actually learn real estate, not some guru who's going to pitch you on their next course, book, or pro membership and excuse the hit to bigger pockets. But I just feel like people don't need these things to get out of fin to get into financial independence. They need actionable steps, like like real love to them and, 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 and a passion to teach them because I, I, I did, I saw tons of people pay into memberships and books and, and those things aren't wrong. They're actually how I got to where I'm at, but don't stop there. Don't keep buying a hundred books. Like at some point you got to take action. Uh, that's incredible. I think it just aligns with our podcast as well. We, you know, you kept saying actionable steps and like there, I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, like why certain episodes we didn't release. And it's because it almost sounded like someone was coming in and pitching themselves. And at the end of the day, we are like, listen, we want you to provide actionable steps for our listeners to take and go implement in their lives. So it's almost like spark notes of a book and they don't have to spend five to 10 hours reading it. It's like, no, here, we did the work for you. Now it's your turn. We've, we literally handing you it on a silver platter. Go do it. 
There you go. And we're, we're here. If you want to ask us questions, hit us on Instagram. That's kind of, I just see a lot of alignment in both sides. So love what you guys are doing. I think it's incredible. Um, and to spend, let's just talk back to Diego, Tribe of Millionaires. Finish the book. Phenomenal. Loved your shout out at the end, by the way. <laughs> but you're getting, you're, you are the average of what? The, the five mm-hmm. people you surround yourself with the most, they call it that. You put yourself in a room with a, a bunch of millionaires or you, some, you know, go back to episode 40 and you can listen to the story. But essentially, you guys are providing that s- a similar thing. Uh, people in the next step of their life in the real estate game for twenty five hundred bucks plus one hundred and ten calls plus three retreats plus just just rubbing mm-hmm. elbows with the people that have done it. Like, I'm not trying to sell you on yeah, that people, but that's like literally nothing. I, like, yeah. And the front end, it's literally nothing. And to do one yeah, deal, you're going to get that tenfold. Yeah, well, no, Diego makes that stupid. buy breakfast so, on one deal it. he does in Austin. Like, <laughs> he's not, <laughs> <guy>. Sorry, Diego. <laughs> you know, and what I was going to say is what's funny is like we don't even have a yearly month, like a yearly fee. We haven't created that, actually. You probably should. Um, and Felipe tells me, hey, we need to have we need to allow people to pay for a year in advance. And um, we actually we we don't. It's a monthly. It's just a 90 day commitment. And it's actually like, we want to help people. Like if you want to stay with us, the membership actually goes down. So it's sort of like the should, first 90 days. We should days. do it backwards. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. So the mm, month, yeah. Interesting. So, sorry, I, don't, I didn't mean to cut you off at all, but I'm just thinking about it. Like you mentioned the first year is 2,500 bucks. And I'm thinking like, okay, like if people stay with you, does it, you know, is it just like a yearly fee of 2,500 bucks? And then how can people get involved with this? Like, do you cap your at a certain limit? Yeah. So, like, so right now we are at, like, we're talking all about this and stuff like that, but right now it's capped. Uh, we've, we've capped it at 75 people, but that doesn't mean that we're not taking on more people uh, because there may be some that you can say they graduate or they leave or they're like, hey, I'm ready to move on to something else, stuff like that. Uh, but the important things about ours is that we like to build community. Community is very, very, very important for us because we just don't want to like for us to basically have it's 250 a month for the first three months. And then after that, it goes down to 200. Right. And you're still getting the same amount of calls and everything, uh, but it just allows us to continue to help people. We do not want this to decide be like, hey. Do I invest into this and then my and then me having to save money for the down payment? Like for us, it's not that we, we want you to just 250 a month is, it still allows people to continue saving for the down payment so that they can take action. Um, so that's what we created that. And the last thing that I would say there, uh, is that we are creating this mastermind and this goes again with the partners, but because of the way that the tribe of millionaires, right, the way that that was created, the way that we're doing rat race is very similar to that is that we are creating an environment for people to also partner up with other people that they find their unfair advantage. And you heard me say this in my podcast interview was like, who is your next who? Right. That's very important that a lot of people might focus on the how, but sometimes they need to focus on that who. And Felipe was my who in 20 in 2020. Andres Bustamante, who you guys feature here, too. He was my who back then and Christian, my who there. Right. And I can go back a few years and every year there has been that who. We used uh, we stole your who for our core four. One of our questions for our core four. I forgot. I almost forgot where we heard it. I know there's a how book. could you forget? Look at that face. There's, man. A, Come on. <laughs> there's a book that is uh, who not how. Right. And I, I but you actually instilled that. in. so it's one of our questions that we ask our guest. This is a little bit of a different episode. So I don't know. If I think we're going to go into the core four. Um, did you have something? One last thing on Rat Race Defy. I just like I know that you said it's capped and things, but you guys do provide content. I don't know if it's daily, mm-hmm. but it's very frequent on Instagram. So it's at Rat Race Defy. If you guys want to check them out, I just would like to plug that for you because it's not like, hey, even if you are interested now and you can't get in, keep that's up exactly with it what it and is. Things like, may open up. We'll let line. people in as because. I'm not going to like, I want to know my people's names. Like I want to be able to, yo, what's up, Tiago? How are you? Like, I care about those things. I generally mm-hmm. want to get to know people. And if I have 200 cool. members, like, am I selling? Okay. So here's another thing that I Felipe, quite a bit. Yes. Really quick. Don't mean to interrupt. We do have to jump on the call. So let me jump off guys. I'm going to say bye. 
and then I'll wrap it up uh, you can wrap it up whenever you need but guys it. it was a pleasure again you guys can find me on ig at real diego corzo and i'll let felipe take it from here hey diego thank you for having me thank you diego thank you good man that's the Great kind of you. passion and love we have for rat race like diego <laughs> jumping off a, a podcast but guys we literally <laughs> have legit, a passion He's gotta be there. so like to answer your question it. um one of the things that we harp on is like is a guru is a mastermind are those things good or bad i think they're fine a guru a mastermind all those things are great but is that person selling you time or is that person selling you a course and that is the difference between good and great great masterminds like ours we are selling you our time it's eight o'clock we gotta go i gotta talk to i gotta i, I have to pour into my mastermind like i genuinely need to pour into their lives for them to be better uh, a guru selling you a course is going to be like, here are the courses, watch them. We're going to meet once a month, yada, yada, yada. Like my favorite are these mindset gurus that are like fail often, fail fast, fail forward. If you're not doing this, you suck. And it's like, dude, yeah. what if I'm just like a single mom with two kids and I just don't have the capability? Like, how can you pour into my life to like, actually, I just want one rental property this year. Like if I could just do that, that would change my life. And like those are the kind of people we help. Incredible. I think I, we do respect your yeah. time. I know you got to go to your, the community. Um, we're going to, we're going to dive into one last question. This whole episode was geared around partnerships. And if you could just leave our guests with where, where and how can they go find a partner that will balance them out, themselves out? I'm thinking about you already are one Avenue is already the mastermind group, but where else people actively seeking a partner, where can they go and potentially find help and find that person that's going to take them? Yeah. To great question. And I think I'm going to start that question with a, a, a mirror answer. Like where can you find a good partner starts with, are you a good partner? And that is the key. Most people are like, what can I get out of this? How much money am I going to make? What do I have to do? How much time do I have to spend? My goal and passion is for Diego to love to answer his phone when I call him because I want to be the best partner that he's ever had, right? I want to make sure that he is in love with our partnership, not just kind of like it. So my goal is to be the best partner that I can be at all times. I'm going to give it 100%. My goal is for Diego to like, and clearly I've succeeded, doesn't even remember our property. Like that's our goal, right? So to say that means... The next actionable step from there is like, okay, you need to become a good partner. Like you need to yourself be a good partner. And that means be accountable to yourself, like yada, yada, yada. But the next thing that you could honestly do is like write down your strengths, everything you love to do when it comes to a business and everything you hate to do when it comes to a business. Okay. And once you do that and you meet someone that's honorable, that's respectful, that's got integrity, all the, all the, all the non-negotiables, if you will. From there, ask them to do the same thing without showing you theirs. So show me your strengths and your weaknesses, write them all down, and then take that home and be like, okay, yeah, we have the same strengths. This partnership is not going to work. Sorry, let's be best friends because we're probably going to have a great time over beers. Yo, you hate doing maintenance and worrying about contractors, and you love Excel sheets. I love getting dirty and, and getting into work and and dealing with contractors, but I hate Excel sheets. Yo, this might actually work, right? So like start there and then start building that relationship. Wonderful. It's really, really good stuff. We, we, we're not going to go into the last drop and, and do our normal thing. Cause you've been on the show before, but we want to thank you again. We, we love chatting with you. We've developed a little, little relationship or relationship here between us and, and Diego and, and, we value it. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story about partnerships. And I, I think we should do, I be, think we should, I think, cut yeah, this part out, I think we should do like a, to be continued versus uh like, thanks for the show. I think we could, I think we'd keep doing it. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, so. let's say that to be continued. Everyone I like it. Yeah. Hold them to it. Accountability. So, Absolutely. Um, but overall, just to echo Corey's point, phenomenal. It's always fun having you guys on our listeners. I'm speaking for them right now. they, Thoroughly thank you and do get a ton of value out of out of what you guys say.